Hello, my name is Paul Ebner, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Animal Sciences at Purdue University. And my job today is pretty easy. I'm just going to be going over the basics of antibiotic and hormone use in livestock production. What we'll do is go through each of the, the compounds and, and show how they're used, uh, the quantities that, uh, that are used, how they work, that's, and then finally their effects and why producers choose to use these drugs. And we'll start with antibiotics. Antibiotics are used in two basic manners in livestock production. The first is the therapeutic use, and this is using the drugs at higher doses uh, for shorter periods. This is used uh, using the drugs to treat specific disease and working where the veterinarian has identified a certain um, organism that is, and then identifying a drug that uh, can be used to treat that infection within the herd. The second uh, manner in which they use is more controversial. That's the subtherapeutic use, and this is using the drugs at lower doses for longer periods. And instead of trying to treat a specific disease, these are this is using the drugs to prevent uh, general infections uh, or limit subclinical infections, and in turn uh, improve the growth rates of the animals. And this has been in practice since the 1950s, shortly um, after the introduction of widespread antibiotic therapy in human medicine. In terms of the quantities of antibiotics that are used in livestock production, it's, it's pretty difficult to get a good handle on that figure because those data aren't readily available from uh, pharmaceutical companies. Currently, there are about 25 different antibiotics that are approved for use in livestock production. Not all drugs are approved um, for use in all livestock species. For instance, laying hens, there are only a limited number of uh, drugs that can be used, while upwards of 25 different antibiotics can be used in beef production. Uh, by the same token, not all drugs can be used in, in both ther therapeutically and subtherapeutically. There are, are uh, rules and regulations as to when and how the drugs can be used. In terms of the quantities, there are two basic uh, estimates that are cited most often. Uh, the first comes from the Animal Health Institutes from 2000. Uh, this group estimates that uh, close to 18 million pounds of antibiotics are used in beef and dairy and swine and poultry production each year in the United States. They also estimate that close to 83% of the antibiotics used are used for the tre treatment of specific disease. So that's using the drugs at, sep or at therapeutic levels. On the other side of the spectrum would be the estimation from the Union of Concerned Scientists. It comes from 2001. They estimate that close to 25 million pounds of antibiotics are used for sub-therapeutic uses alone. They go on to estimate that 21 million pounds of antibiotics are used in swine and poultry production alone. In terms of how they work, and now we're basically talking about subtherapeutic antibiotic use, uh, they work in two different in ways, the, mainly in disease prevention. Um, they prevent clinical diseases. These are diseases that are readily apparent that, that can decimate a herd, but they also prevent those subclinical diseases that aren't readily apparent that you that you may not pick up, even the vet may not pick up. But there are other health benefits. Uh, the antibiotics improve gut health. They also improve the micro or microbiological uh, populations within the gut, um, aiding in uh, nutrient absorption. Um, regardless, the result is that uh, using the drugs uh, results in increased feed efficiency and increased average daily gain, which translates to more rapid and efficient growth. This table shows the effects of in-feed antibiotic use in swine, and it's put up here just to give you an idea of why producers use the drugs. Um, if you follow along in the left part of the table, you can see that it's divided into the different phases of growth within the pigs. The biggest benefits are seen in the starter phase. If you look in the top, uh, top row, you'll see that daily gain is improved 16.4 percent with the with inclusion of, of the antibiotics in the feed. Feed to gain ratio is decreased 6.9 percent and the decrease in the feed to gain ratio translates to improved feed efficiency. And you see similar um, improvements as you go along but the improvements decrease as the animals get older. And this is a table showing the effects in other livestock species. We already saw piglets and growing pigs but in broiler chickens, you see improved growth rates between 3 to 10 percent. Laying hens, improved growth rates of 2 percent, and the veal calves, 7 to 10 percent. So we'll switch gears and concentrate on hormone use and livestock production. And hormones are used in two basic ways. Uh, the first are the reproductive hormones. These are used to synchronize estrus, to uh, 
uh, induced parturition. <clears throat> and these, these drugs are used in beef, dairy, and pork production. Uh, what we're mainly concerned about in these talks are the growth promoting hormones. And when we're talking about growth promoting hormones, we're usually talking about beef cattle and the implants, the different types of implants that are used. And these implants are designed to slowly release uh, growth stimulants over time. I've also include, uh, included RBST, which is used in dairy cattle. Its use is decreasing, but it still is somewhat controversial uh, use of the drug, and so I've included it here. Um, important to note on the bottom here is that growth promoting hormones are not used in pork and poultry production. So in terms of the quantities of, of hormones used in livestock production in beef cattle, there are currently six uh, hormones approved for uh, growth promotion, and they're divided into different categories. The estrogenic hormones include estradiol and xeranol. The adrogenic hormones include testosterone and trembolone acetate. And then there's the progestins, which are progesterone and MGA. I've included asterisks around those uh, hormones that are naturally occurring. And in terms of the number of animals, it's estimated that over 90% of all conventionally raised beef cattle are implanted at least once during their lives. And switching over to dairy cattle, like I said, the hormone, the, the hormone used most is RBST. A 2000 estimate uh, predicted that around 22% of all dairy cows in the United States receive B RBST. This number is decreasing uh, rapidly as there's a growing demand for RBST free milk. So these are the supplemented hormones and we'll see as the other other speakers go that there are a lot of natural hormones that are excreted um, from the animal in the same way that supplemented hormones are and they can also have an environmental effect. But I'm in terms of how they, how they work, uh, the growth promoting hormones in beef cattle they increase feed intake, which changes the composition of the animal. They increase circulate, circulating insulin like growth factor 1 and somatotropin, which um, have effects on different metabolic processes within the animal and change body composition. Some have a direct effect on protein accretion, and others interfere with the anti-anabolic effects of uh, corticosteroids. Regardless, the result is that you have increased uh, feed efficiency and increased lean muscle mass. RBSD works by changing the metabolism of other systems within the cow such that more nutrients are available for milk production. Uh, you have an increased blood flow of nutrients to the udder and you have an increased uptake of milk precursors by the mammary gland. And the result is a partitioning of energy towards milk production uh, with a concomitant increase in milk production, no drop in quality. This is an important slide and it's showing basically the effects of, of growth hormone and hormone use and why producers would use them. How well they work depends upon the stage of growth of the animal. It's the opposite of what we see with antibiotics as the hormones, growth promoting hormones are more effective as the animal ages. This bottom figure right here is pretty important in understanding why the drugs are used. They, they uh, give about a $5 to $10 return for every $1 investment. RBST has similar effects. Um, you see estimates of upwards of 10% increase in, in daily milk production and an increase of 8 to 12 pounds of milk per day or per day. So just to summarize basically what we've talked about in terms of antibiotics, they're used in livestock production both therapeutically and subtherapeutically. Um, the in-feed antibiotics improve animal health, uh, which translates to more rapid and efficient growth. The antibiotics have a demonstrated economic benefit for livestock producers. In terms of hormones, six hormones are currently approved for growth promotion in beef production. RBST is approved for dairy production, but its use is decreasing. Growth promoting uh, hormones are not used in poultry or, or pork production. Um, the use of implants in beef and RBST in dairy dramatically improves growth rates and milk production respectively. And this is important, each is, each is considered among the most cost-effective management practices available to produce, producers. <music>